Hello, everyone. Welcome to Meticulous Talks on November 4th. I am Chris, of course. And I'm Hithrock. Good to talk to you again, Hithrock. Yeah? It is, uh, gee, it feels like it's been longer than two weeks for me. It certainly does feel like that. But I also had eventful couple of weeks here. Very busy. <laughs> yes. I 100% agree with that. Uh, yeah. What with, well, yeah, life and, and the Invitational and everything. Um, yeah. Yeah. But it has indeed been just two weeks. Uh, we're back for our regularly scheduled stream. Uh, this the news discussing today is a, is a little a little old perhaps, um, but we have not talked about it yet. Nope. And because things have been so busy for me, uh, this is indeed going to be kind of first impressions on these cards. I have not had much of a chance to look at them. Or well, it's going to be like the second impression. Yeah, I've seen them. I know basically what they all do. I haven't had much chance to think deeply about um, the implications of many of them. There's, there's a Trixie there. There is. With and a, a very iconic art. Yes. And probably, spoilers I guess, probably one of the most interesting cards uh, yeah, I would agree with that. It's fairly unique. Although there's a couple of really unique cards in here. Yeah. If you have no idea what we're talking about, uh, a couple of weeks ago, three, four weeks ago, uh, Commentary of Magic released the third uh, slice, the third tranche of prize wheel supplement cards, all coming to core. Uh, 11 cards total, if I'm not I mistaken. So, yeah. Yep. One, at, at least one for each of the colors. One SR, one super rare. Uh, a new, new ground, I guess. Prize wheel cards. And a problem as well. I don't think this is the first prize wheel problem, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, that's what we'll be here today. Not this is not a review stream. These cards are are being changed. Uh, some of them actually have been changed, and we'll call out where the art is not consistent with uh, the actual text. Uh, so do our review once things are proper, final, released. Just talking about things. Yeah. Also, as many as there are unique cards, there's one specifically not unique card in there. <laughs> True. That's right. That's true. Uh, so, with that being said, I, I put these in order, in, in the order of number as currently listed on Ponyhead, uh, which is not necessarily, it probably isn't going to be the order they're in finally, because no. this is kind of shuffled up with resources and events and such, but... Yeah. Um, I think it, this is... Oh, no, never mind. As I said, these are the numbers as they currently are on Ponyhead, so that's what I went with. Um, and so that means that we start with Consolation Prize. A two cost, five power resource is unique. That is played on your main character. I should say colorless, that's also important. Goes to your main character. At the end of a face off involving that character, your main character, put one of your flipped cards into your hand. If you lost that face off, put all of them into your hand instead, and at immediate speed, regardless of who's involved in the face-off. Oh, whoopsies. Sorry. I clicked the slideshow, but did not click it in OVS. Whoopsies. Um, yes. During the face-off, you always get to exhaust this card to flip an additional card. This is pancake card. The, uh, you know, I probably could have guessed that, even if you hadn't told me. Well, it says right there on the card. It uh, well, that too. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I, okay, you know, I'll admit I hadn't actually looked at that, at that, where the where it, yeah that bit at the bottom there. 
Fair but enough. Yeah, you can you can see that there's a pancake card even without the text. Yeah, a a an immediate thought towards farm, also towards well towards chaos decks in general, with the ability to recycle, uh, well flipped cards in your hand. You still need a way to put them on top of your deck, but that's what Piggy yeah. Sense is for. Uh, which yeah, chaos farm is the use is what is today, but chaos control has been a thing in the past too. Even. I mean, an, an aggro deck could play this, too, frankly. Yeah, if there's a card draw in a way, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Every, well, it's an extra flip all the time. It's only, you only get the card if your main character's in the face-off. Yes. Which? Or some aggro decks, like Luna. Mm-hmm. You usually that's what happens. Mm -hmm. Yep. But yeah, this also gives me Twilight vibes. You know, the one that puts events into your hand. Mm -hmm. This is not quite the same because it can only put one card into your hand. But it's it's a shadow of that. Yep. The faithful student one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's it's a good point. Um. Like yeah, I think this has this has applications all over the place. At uh, single best art in the set says Grandpa's. I I disagree. I disagree so much. Well, you obviously disagree. But like, come on, even Bugle said that that card art is good. <laughs> this is pretty good art. I this is pretty good art. Yes. Yeah. Um, but yeah, this this seems like the kind of thing that I would want to try all over the place. Um, my mind goes toward control probably more than any other because, like, that's the that's the archetype that's going to be playing staff and using it most of the time, and that so wow. you're going to have not farm. Farm doesn't always use the staff. Yeah, but farm always has face-offs. And, and yes. Sweeping a troublemaker is really good because you're going to put that troublemaker into your hand. Uh, that's a good I, point. I, like, I think, well, control, it's possible to see this card in control, especially chaos control, as you mentioned. I think farm is the direct. I don't, I don't know if you put this card into every farm deck. Uh I guess you don't put it in, in a farm deck that doesn't farm with a main. Right. But I think if you farm with a main, there's no reason to not farm this card. Well, that's kind of the interesting thing, is it like, Chaos Farm, as currently implemented, doesn't use its main all the time. Because the main's usually Skystar. You're, like, you you have so much benefit of flipping so many cards that you can kind of do it with friends. And you're going to yeah. have uh, Spike and Gabby in play, and Berry Punch and them in play, so... You actually don't rely as much on the farm as, as uh, on the main as um, the adventure style decks do. Yep, fair enough. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> it's also so when you lose the face off, you put each of the flipped cards into your hand. But I feel like that's going to be unlikely. Like if you flip additional cards. Spike Lee, you're going to win the face-off anyway. Unless you play Novo. Unless either you play Novo or <clears throat> or the extra flips were ignored. Because yeah. of uh, Spike and Gabby's effect. Yeah. And, and ties count as well, Grandpa's yeah. points out. Yes. All right. Well, it's a it's a it's a very simple and effective uh, design, perhaps without nuance. But well, we've got that coming in spades soon. And the rest of this uh, bit of release. So moving on. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Takes us to Rainbow Dash. 
Reading Rainbow. Cost two, power two, three requirement, meticulous one in blue. No purple anywhere here, just meticulous in blue. Uh, when you put a card on the bottom of your deck, you pay one less to play your next card this turn to a minimum of one. So this is a purple, orange, pink card, right? It's got pieces of that all over. Paying less for, well, I guess pink is more of friends than just cards. And blue also has cost reductions uh, historically, even since Premiere, actually, uh, with Cloud Chaser and uh, Two Bits mm -hmm. and other cards. <clears throat> but like interacting with the bottom of the deck in a way is orange thing, meticulous is purple thing, and cost reduction is also a pink thing, which it makes it fun. Kind of. Yeah. You know what uh, jumps out to me mm -hmm. first ab about this card? Having uh, refereed some Invitational games lately, yeah. uh, is that that's a mandatory cost reduction. <laughs> yeah. Uh, this is a, a theme, actually, that we'll get to that as, as we go through the cards in this set. There are a lot of mandatory triggers in these cards, uh, which... more things to forget about. Um, but yeah. Uh, put cards in the bottom of your deck after face-offs, of course. Uh, when processing meticulous triggers, of course. Uh, and other effects like it. And then with sudden closure. Is that is that it? For ways to put stuff on the bottom of your deck? There's Twilighting. Well, yeah. Uh, sorry, that's covered in effects like Meticulous. Sure. Yeah, I guess. It's also specifically the bottom of your deck, so Sudden Closure wouldn't work mm -hmm. as well. Can you even Sudden Closure your own stuff? I don't remember. Not that you'd want to most of the time. Uh, okay, I have napcaked my own friends before. Mm-hmm. Uh, flips for face-offs, yes. Yes. Um, that is the natural one, especially in a... Excuse me. Especially in a blue deck that wants the cost reductions most. Oh, that's kind of interesting, actually. Because obviously, all them face-offs aren't going to be good for that. No. Stick is free. Yeah, as long it's, as you play a card. It's it, it's either stick or, uh, or troublemaker faceoffs, or similar thing. Oh wait a second, this this puts fuel onto the Granny Smith combo, doesn't it? I mean, there are other ways to reduce cost of things to one. I guess. I guess. Like there's the vinyl that when you move her, I think it reduces the cost as well. The pink one. And you can move her. There's a ways to move her infinitely. So now, if this was if if this was not to a minimum of one, it would be pretty good. Mm -hmm. So, I said aggro a little bit, and the and that combo deck. Um, although maybe it's, well, this doesn't go in farm probably because it's, it's, it's just not impactful enough. Uh, like it is, it's good. You'll get the benefits. You like the meticulous, but it is a, it is a two flip and that you really, really need to be careful with that. It depends. Like if you're flipping a bunch of cards as a farm deck. Could get good reductions. I just don't know what farm would like to reduce. <laughs> yeah, like you're still gonna play troublemakers for one eighteen. You would want to reduce. Yeah, Double. after the faceoffs over, you're not gonna play your hasty stuff. So eh, yeah, yeah, like you would reduce something in the main phase, like obviously because 
you fight in the troublemaker phase. But right, I just don't really know. Well, I'm well, well. Wait a second. Sorry, no, no, no. You would have your meticulous trigger at the start of your turn, and then you could play your hasty card for one less in your troublemaker phase. Sure, but after the troublemaker phase, you could also play something in the main phase. Yes. And I don't know what farm would like to play. That Fair. Cost one already. Fair enough. Fair enough. Like Garble comes to mind. Like that's. But I mean, you're you're putting that into play with Pony of Shadows. You're not playing that. <laughs> that's why you put that card on the bottom. Do not draw it. Uh, yeah, oh, meticulous and blue. Right. Yeah. Gunpowder points out shield and I, that's five minus a shield <laughs> five minus a shield and consolation yeah, prize but that's it's just a reduction by one i mean it is like you don't really you know, get a benefit 118 may not seem like a lot but well yeah but you get that from the meticulous on this card unless you keep the card on top of course hmm. but yes there are some things you can reduce by one but the reason i mentioned farm decks is because they flip a ton of cards, some of them do anyway. Uh, you would normally get higher reduction from a face-off from this card than in any other deck. Well, except like Chaos stuff that also flips a bunch of cards. Mm -hmm. But what my point here is, is that like it doesn't actually matter that much. Like, yeah, you, you can play Consolation Prize, but it's still going to cost you one less. It doesn't really matter how many cards you flipped. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Mm -hmm. That that is a fair way to think about it, yeah. Yeah. It's best with with decks that want to play things that cost three or four or, or such. Yeah. Blue, purple, royal tutor deck point two. Let's go. Two point oh. That plays Twilighting. I think that's the only thing that puts things on the bottom of the deck there. It does. But gee, blue-purple is... Ugh. Frankly, I, I'm not quite in favor of giving blue-purple more, more gas at this point. I am. Um, I am. Oh. So, oh, Grandpa's has been yelling uh, Twilight Sparkle's Balloon in the, in the chat for a while now. Or... That card. Yeah. Which... Yes, that puts cards in the bottom in that deck. You have to move a character. That's where Hoofs comes in, right? Mm hmm All, all synergy. Everything in those colors. <laughs> it's a good color combination. Very enjoyable to play, too. Do you want to move on to Cherry Berry? Sure, let us. Uh, so, this is one of the cards that is not as shown. There's, there's been a change. Um, I will quickly um, go through it. It's, yes, Terry Berry, get me a new one. Two pink, two pink requirement, two pink power. Two cost, Agile. Traveler is the bit that you don't see, but is there. And when this card's problem is replaced, score a point. Pretty simple. Pretty straightforward. Um, I'm asking... I, I, okay. Obviously, this works, right? Like, it, it, the card does see the trigger when the problem gets replaced, right? It's not sent home first? Yes. Obviously. <laughs> As if Sim would make that mistake. Um, so. Well, the trigger is triggered, but you by the time you process it, she will be home already. But that's when she is triggered. Okay. All right, and and th th that's going to get clarified too. Okay, fair enough. Um, so it's relatively easy to score the points with it if you have the AT to spare, right? Uh, if if that's kind of interesting. It, 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 in in some senses, this is again another pay two AT to score a point card because if if a if a face off is is Ending, oh, I'll pay two and move this card there to score a point. Well, presumably you would move her before Well, you win the face-off. So that's the upside. 
yes, uh, uh, that's the upside of the card is that it is it is also a friend that can confront problems and contribute to the face offs and um, has traveler, so you'd want to be moving it whenever you could. Yeah. What I believe you can't do is after like a multi face off, you can't score more than one point from this ability because all of the problems are replaced. Yeah, and there's there's no priority window to move in for that, right? Yeah. I'm pretty sure. I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure that's how that works. Um But the single face off, sure. Mm-hmm. I I guess I, I want to make sure you're locked in here with me doesn't actually get replaced, right? Or does it? I think it does. Oh, no, it's a replacement it, modifier. Yeah. Yeah. It replaces its own replacement. Yeah. <laughs> um, so well, there's that to consider. Um, there's Jest? Jest, that's right. Jest is a way to to potentially score multiple points in one turn with this, right? Well, <laughs> if you have similar duplexes, I guess. Okay. Because you would need to confront Jest multiple times to replace multiple problems. But you can replace one, and you can kind well, of... Well, like you can... Uh... Yeah, I guess that's right. Okay. Unless you mean replacing a problem and then doing a face-off. Which is fair. He could do that. Mm -hmm. No, I, I, I mean that that does work, but I, I wasn't thinking through the uh, they sequencing. Should, yeah. So there we go. We have a similar. So it's purple, pink, yellow deck. We run similar, and we're on day shift, and we play similar a bunch of times. We confront just clowning, clowning around like a bunch of times, and then we move Cherry Berry every time. Oh, no, if you confront it. No, it's fine. Yeah, similar duplicates confront steps, and you'll have a priority window between each of them. So, yeah, it's fine. Totally okay. Seems good. Seems viable. <laughs> so my sort of deck. About as viable as anything else we ever discuss on this stream. But yeah, uh, I believe this is the first pink point acceleration. Uh, yes. That may be right. I think that is right, yeah. Casting my mind back through all oh, the no, weird... Oh, no, I forgot. I Wait. forgot. I forgot about Sea Poppy. There we go. <laughs> okay, that's right. That's right. Right. This is and the I first guess... deterministic point exploration. Yeah. And I guess still partying is kind of. Uh right. I guess but... strictly speaking, that does that's count. Not yeah. Really, that's not the same. It's it's not acceleration. It's just it's it's sudden points. Yes, you just win. Well, you used to just win. Now you. Win divided by three. Um. So, given that this has got Traveler now, it seems very... I mean, yeah, there's there's no thing in this card that works for anything other than an aggro deck, right? Like it, 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 yeah. It, it scores points, it confronts problems, it gets more power. That's That's all... Yeah, like yeah. Troll doesn't want. I mean, without that. Traveler, I would just play this card, score a point once, and never do anything again. Mm -hmm. Because usually paying two to move a two power friend is feels bad. Yep. With with Traveler, there's a little more incentive. Yeah, it's it's still. Eh. Yeah, I would agree. Yeah. It's still, eh, but. Like, well, the first time you move her back, it's like 280 to get the free power friend. That's like fine, but depending on what kind of deck you play, it might be. But it will give you a point at some point, so. Like, unless this card is removed, and unless you're playing against some really heavy control deck, problem is going to be replaced at 
some point, one point. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, if you if you have the AT to spare, may as well. All right, moving Time on. to make a herd of oh. adoring fans deck with this. It's another so, viable idea. Well. I mean, you've already made a Herd of Adoring Fans deck. Oh, you want to... Oh, wait a second. Hmm? Yeah, instead of Timbley, you use this thing. It works. And with Day Shift, uh, you can move her back and move all of the tokens back as well. Hmm. Because Herd of Adoring Fans actually has a second ability, did you know? <laughs> I was aware of it, yeah. It's... Uh... When you move an attached friend, you move a friend token friend with the same name. You can make a conga line. But yeah, anyway. I think Timble is better for that. It's <laughs> funny. Probably. All right, moving on. Yeah. Okay. Uh this is the this is the one that I remember jumping out to me for oh my god, those are both mandatory triggers. <laughs> um, and people having to remember this, but Flutter Swarm, cost one, three requirement, five flip, goes to your home. When one or more of your friends enters play, a minus one power counter goes on this card. When opposing friend enters play, a co a, a counter gets moved from this card to that friend. If minus one power counters are going to ever be a thing, I sure hope it's from this card. Because uh, if it's not from this card, it probably is doesn't work ever. This is come again. So so this is good. This is really good, right? I I would say so. You're only investing one AT, and then you're saying, you know, you play a few friends, and and you're able to distribute those minus one power counters around. Yeah. What I'm saying is like if you do a minus one power counter card that's better than this, it's probably like you you're really pushing it. I am, I am, I'm saying that if it, like, this is kind of the test of the concept. I wouldn't, I probably wouldn't want a more powerful card than this for it. It doesn't reduce more than by one, though, because you only put one power counter. Right, but it's, it's, that's one, like, forever. Yeah. Yeah, there's no way to remove them at the moment. Well, you could frighten a friend. That's, a, I think, the only way. Or blink it, or you know, make it leave place. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's it's not unique, so it could be more than one. Yeah, that's true. And it is and, a sorry. Go on. As we know, yellow will probably be playing more friends in general than other colors because of the critters. Mm -hmm. Because it's not like it's any friend under display. So if you play friends always there and get free critters, that's minus three, three minus one power counters on this card. Or if you run Birds of a Feather and you duplicate your critters... Wait, wait, wait. Does it work that way? It says when one, of, one or more of your friends enters play. It doesn't say when you play them. Well, so, like, I, was, I, I thought that if a single card creates more than one uh, friend, like, as a token... Oh, you're right, you're right. Yeah. Oh, I misread it. Yeah, it's one or more. Yeah. Ah, uh, that's no fun. But if you had, if it was multiple effects, right? Yes. If like, it's... It, you you have the friends are always there, and you have the talented Yona that puts another critter on the end of that. Right. Yes. That's two triggers. Yeah. Yes, that's true. But yeah, I'm guessing this says that specifically to avoid birds of a feather. Mm -hmm. Bodyguard's in Treehouse. Bodyguard is a oof, man. Yeah, that sounds that sounds interesting. That combination. Treehouse to the nice one on everything already, and then bodyguard and hmm. So the bodyguard thing is a little bit a little bit anti synergistic because like you you know. One part wants to remove the other friends, the other part wants them to stay in play and just be useless because they have no power. Some friends have had a really useful even without power. I guess. Especially in purple. 
Uh, well, yeah, stuff that exhausts to do stuff. Like, yeah, yeah. If your guidance cancel or starlight doesn't have power, like, uh, still generates AT though. But yeah, uh, this is an interesting card. We need the party bomb back, where you dismiss stuff with zero power immediately. All of it. I mean, isn't... Wait a second. Maybe I'm misremembering. Pretty sure I'm misremembering. That derpy, well, the, the, the one that costs five, is it... Is, is it... Like dismiss stuff that at the cost adds up to five or yes. Oh, okay. Well, whatever. But I think you can do less than that. Like, I'm, like tokens cost zero. So, oh, that's not tokens. Oops. Why did I think of tokens? I don't know. But yes. Oh well. Well, like yeah. I I think this is a card that. Ah, post sure, sure, thank you. Um, like it, it is a it is a very low investment of you know just a single AT. Three Rex easy to meet. So it's got a relatively high flip, so it's not that big of a deal. Like Thorax plays this, right? Probably. Yeah. It honestly, gives you a fairly fairly well, not that you need it, but. A, a fairly good edge, even against other aggro decks. Yeah. Um. Ah, but see, if you're playing against yellow versus yellow, the second effect is not <clears throat> restricted by the, like multiplicity of friends. So they can mm -hmm. just play a bunch of tokens. And right. And move your counters immediately. Right, and they are mandatory triggers. So. Yes. Yeah. That that gets interesting. Maybe. So, while we have GP here, is the second trigger mandatory by design? Because it would be nice if it was optional. Like, I could choose which friends to reduce power on and which not. Okay. Would it be too strong otherwise? Could be. Yeah. Either way. Uh, oh, sorry. Yeah. Also, I wanted to mention the quick tangent. Apparently, we do have a Derpy Hoofs card in the game, and I didn't even notice. <laughs> like, a card that's actually named Derpy Hoofs. Instead of, you know, Mayo Instead Mayor, of Party Mayor. Various. Really? Probably Mayor. Yes. It's a troublemaker from Fond Memories. Oh! I did not even notice that it was not a Mayor something. Yeah. Huh. I mean, I guess that, that would be the set to have it in there if, if it was going to be anywhere. Yeah, that's fair. Anyway, that's my side note while searching for Postal Mayor. Yeah, but uh, yeah, I, I, I am happy. I get a chance to use the black dice that I've been keeping around <laughs> since, gee, like years now. Um, I should make some custom dice as well. It'll be fun. With like minus one, minus two, minus three. It's also really hard to get spin down D6s. It's pretty much not a thing, but sometimes you want it to be. Sometimes. Well, I mean, there's only six. Yeah, I still take forever to turn things around. And guess yeah. if you've been doing that for a while, you get used to it. But... Like, you know, you, you, you know that the one opposite one that you've got is the one that will make seven. Yes, so. which is not helpful when you're trying to spin down. Well, you know, it is. It's it... a lot of thinking, okay? It's like, <laughs> oh, yeah. Like, if you do it constantly, sure, like you'll get used to it, but I'm not. Maybe. Uh, what are we going to do in TTS, by the way, for minus one power oh, counters? Yeah, we can, we can just add minus one power counters. It's okay. easy. Okay. Uh, okay, so let's let's move on. Yep. Uh, right. This is, is one of those this is another cards. one of the change cards. I, I need to refresh myself on what what's different on this one. Uh, it now says when this card enters play, each player discards a card. So it's the same thing for the first ability. 
And the second ability is when a player discards a card for the first time each turn, the player puts the top two cards of their deck into their discard pile. Right. Okay. So only so, only triggers once, but gets two always. Yeah, discards two instead of instead of triggering on every discard instance. Okay. Discards card for the first time each turn. Okay. Yes, and for the rest of it. Two cost, one wreck, two power. Very easy fit in any orange deck that's playing friends. Uh, probably a control deck, if I'm interpreting mill? this right. Well, yes. Like, I yeah. Mean, yes. The I don't think I put mill is, is not control, I suppose, yeah. I don't think I put this anywhere other than mill. I mean, well, yes, yes. I guess that we're saying mill is a is a very much supported uh, 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 thing now, right? Yeah, but like mill is kind of its own thing. It yeah, is, is asking yeah, uh, uh, isn't control. It it's kind of is, it's, but also kind it's, of isn't. yeah. It's 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 definitely along the same lines. It's it's a semantic question on whether you want to call mill its own thing that's separate from control, or if it's just a kind of control. That's a that's a it, okay, so here's my. I think mill is kind of control, but if somebody says a control deck, mill is not the first thing that comes to my mind. Yes. So if you say this guard card goes into a control deck, I was like, does it though? Even though I would agree that mill is kind of control. Mm -hmm. But you're right. This is a this is a big. Uh, a big boost uh, to mill strategies. And probably was a bit too big of a boost given the updated <laughs> text because updated text is noticeably weaker. Uh, that's, well, yes. Yeah. In the in the case where multiple triggers could have happened in one turn, which uh, that sure sounds like the kind of thing that a mill deck would be able to do. Um, yeah. Yeah. And most of the effects discard usually two cards or one for the opponent anyway, so you actually get more cards discarded. So yeah. In a, in a way, it's good that it says one or uh, it doesn't say one or more discard that many anymore. Uh, or, well, mill that many anymore. Yeah. For what it's worth, I do like that there is a bit of a uh, counterplay now to um, discard-fueled aggro, as happens in blue a lot. Well, not a lot, but somewhat. I, I think it's good that we have a card like that. Yeah. Uh, also, sorry, that question in the chat. So Unsparkling Cider is one of the ones that comes to my mind, although that also that requires Force Discard to start with. Um, so, that too. If this, uh... Coriander, oh, jeez. <laughs> Coriander is, is the card of Invitational so far. Yeah. And, and, yes, that's also a good point. If you replace the discard with Pinky Sense, it would not be... The effect does not turn off, right? That so wait. When a player, well, you re, it, when you, sorry, what was the question? <laughs> you replace the pinky. You replace the discard with pinky sense. This ability yeah. does not trigger anymore this turn because it, you already discarded the card for the first time to, for that turn, right? That's correct. But or, wait, no, wait yeah, a second. But is it though? Wait, no, 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 no. If if this thing didn't trigger, then there's no. Way oh God, here we go again. When, yeah. when, yeah. If if this didn't trigger, then you didn't discard a card. That's what I would say. But Flurry Heart, on the other hand, does not trigger even even if nothing moves. Right, because she looks for attempts to move, not. Oh yeah, moves. that's right. She says would move. That's true. That's the difference. Yes, that is correct. Cool. Fine distinctions.
I, you know, the lesson learned is is to not not print a card like Flurry Heart ever again. I think. <laughs> or print more cards well, like Flurry Heart so people learn how. Maybe, to maybe. <laughs> Uh, sorry. So wait a second. Uh, da, 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 da. oh yeah, good point. Right in tender hoof. I mean, so the the revised version of this text is a mandatory trigger too, right? Uh, let me check. Yes. Okay. Yes. More mandatory triggers. It's mandatory because it's the player. Who discarded does it? It has to be mandatory. It's just like, oh, right. I'll right, just right. choose okay. not to. <laughs> right. So that that makes sense. Yes. Yeah. This one has to be mandatory. Yeah. So like, my point is, maybe this is a fine time to say it. I feel like the game is getting to the point where there's a lot of things you need to keep track of. Often. Um, well, I mean. You have to keep track of optional triggers just as much as mandatory triggers. Right. Just if you skip an optional trigger, that's bad for you. And if you skip a mandatory trigger, that's actually invalid. Right. Like, like. And your opponent should remind you. About yes. mandatories, yes. Yes. Yeah. Like, so, you know, at the highest levels of play, yes, this kind of stuff all works. Like, I. I see, I see people remembering their triggers most of the time, but certainly, like even much below that, when you get down to people like me who struggle to remember eccentric and calming half the time, and to do our meticulous, um, I feel like there is getting to be a number. Like you have to be, and and like especially some of the continuous modifiers that we'll get to later in this release. It's 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 getting pretty complicated, is my impression <coughs> of a lot of the game states we can have these days. I mean, sure, but I don't think mandatory triggers have anything to do with this. Like, let's say that you're playing at the kitchen table. Is there really a difference between a mandatory trigger and an optional one? If you forget, well, it. no, that's a fair yeah. point. So, like, you either are keeping track of your cards or you aren't, and. Mm, okay, that's that's, that's that's a fair way to say it. So yes, the game gets more complex as more carded cards get added, but I think that's just a general trend, not specifically related to mandatory triggers. It's so you're thinking of mandatory triggers probably because those are the ones you have to remind people about. Yes, and it actually shows you how much people forget about things. Yes. But like, and people forget about things a lot. Remember Mimics, those super powerful card? People are forgetting about that one too. Kind of. I don't know if it's as noticeable. Like actually, it, it's, it's... It's very noticeable for the player who, who forgets it. Yes. It's... it's... Remember somebody, I don't, I don't remember who, but somebody brought like a little piece of paper with E on it. Saying that it's gonna always name events. Was that Bugle? <laughs> Might have been Bugle. Yeah, I'm not sure. I, I remember somebody did that. Yeah. So it's like, it's the same thing. It's easy to forget about things. Sure. It's it's Spooky Ruins was the one that came to my mind actually, but. Oh yeah. Anyway. Uh, moving on. Yeah. So this is the best art. Of praise will. It is very good. I I agree with you there. Let me quote Bugle on this one. <laughs> Stop giving Trixie cool art. <laughs> Exhibit A, presented by Hifcock. How about you explain this guy? All right, this is a one cost five power showdown. When was the last time you've seen this trade cursor? Uh, do, 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 do. Did we have any in? I will tell you. The last time you've seen this trait was in Crystal Games with those must with the uh, multi uh, yeah. showdowns, huh? Okay. Problem face off. 
Yeah, I, I was I was wondering for a second if we had any in like high magic or stuff, nope. but no, no. no okay. okay, we had in the question Odyssey spell showdown, which is a problem. Right, but not <laughs> a not trait. The same. No, yeah. not a trait. Yes. Uh, main phase. Start a phase off involving one of your characters or troublemakers, and an opposing character or troublemaker. So you can just challenge anything with yeah. anything. Anything that has power while it's in play. Well, at least has power that means anything while yeah. it's in play. The winner turns an opposing character or troublemaker involved in the face-off over. So, the first thing that came to my mind is not necessarily how this card is going to be used, but I thought about Changeling Pretender and opponent playing Seleno. I... I, I... We, I think you're wrong in how this card is going to be used. I think that's a, that's a, well. It's just it's a very specific. It's a, it's, it's a it's a single it's a it's a single circumstance, but it's it's an extremely potent one. Yeah. So you play this card, you lose the face off, you flip your changeling pretender, and now forever you have pay two, score two points. Isn't that great? Yeah. I mean, it, it, it's it's not going to be great for very long. Like probably. What? About five turns. Yeah. Right? Two ET per turn. You need, yeah. <laughs> um. So like, there's that, but like, this is the card that I think is is gonna be the hardest for me to to rate because there's so many things you can do with this. It's very versatile and it only costs one. Yeah. It is. You know, as mentioned, basically, pick pick two cards on the field anywhere. Well, you know, one's on your side, one's on the opposing side. And, you know, one of them is going to get turned over. Granted, at main face speed only. Um, but, yeah, you can use this to turn over an opposing troublemaker to get through a problem. You can use it to turn over one of your troublemakers uh, to get, like, a reflip villain or something later. You can even challenge two troublemakers against each other. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know why would you do that, but that's fun. Uh, to me, the main application that I see for this card is it's a really good way to flip a main that's hard to flip. And like, well, I don't know if Student 6 is a good example, but we have a like Bubbly Mare, right? Think of Bubbly Mare. Bubbly Mare definitely runs this card, right? And you just challenge something with high power and you lose. Mm -hmm. and bam, you have a flipped Bubbly Mare. Um, but that's harmony. But then there's examples in core and adventure as well. And this card doesn't stop become uh, doesn't stop being useful after that too. Yeah, like you can still use this card after it's served its purpose. Yeah, like I'll 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 admit the fact that uh, I was thinking actually of using it to unflip opposing mains. Yes. Um. Yeah. It like. You could use uh you, you could use a Novo to challenge a Thorax and uh flip him over. <laughs> like that. Yeah. Um But yeah, as 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 Grandpa's points out, the fact that you can the, the fact that it works both ways means that your oppo the opponent's deck's got it in there too, probably. As as counter to itself. So which deck does not run this card? Deck does not run this card. Farm runs it because it likes face-offs no matter what's happening. Thorax runs it because it's a pay one to frighten a friend. Right. Or get over a troublemaker or make your opponent very sad by flipping their changeling pretender. Does Mill have any reason to run this? Mill? I don't know. I guess not as much, yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. There you go. We found the archetype. Found one. That doesn't want this card. Um. And I guess, well, ugh, geez. I mean, I'm I'm thinking of combos, but chances are most combos would find a way to make this useful. Probably to flip their main over or do something. Or just as a control tool. Yeah. Yeah, it, it's a it's a wonderful design. Um, 
Oh yeah, Student Six actually loves this, doesn't they? Yeah, that's what I said earlier. Oh, sorry. Like I, don't, I don't always pay attention to things you say. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, before I said Bubbly Mare also mentioned Student Six because it is a way to flip hard mains over. Mm -hmm. Hard to flip mains. And Student Six is one example. Another one is the Pinkie Pie. That it, like that one is so hard to flip. The I don't remember what her current subtitle is, but the one that dismisses. Friends. Oh, right. Yeah, the one that's been. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that's a fair point, actually. Um, yeah, like early days. Obviously, card hasn't even been played properly. Know, at all, it's uh, still in beta. But this design has the potential to be as elegant as Interdimensional Portal. I, I'm thinking. You know, Portal is, in my mind at least, a card that's famous for having so many different uses out of such a simple ability. Um, and it just shows up all over the place. And I I look at it as, as like the, the one of the pinnacles of card design in this game. Um, I think this has the potential to be on the same level. Yeah, it could be. I hope so. It has tricks on its art. Yeah. It's a good card. Uh, moving on? Yeah. So this one is one of those distinctly not unique cards I've been talking about. Right. <laughs> Yeah. Our white friend, Trenderhoof, Bespoke Friendship, two cost, two power, white, three requirement, unicorn. Players can't play friends with the same name as another one of their friends in play. And at main phase, exhaust this card, pay one to choose a friend, and banish each other friend with the same name as the chosen friend. I expect to be choosing either critter token or unicorn token a lot. Well, if you say token. Well, <laughs> okay. Well, They're just critters and unicorns. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you don't have to name the card. You choose the card. Oh, yeah, card. that's true. You choose the card. Yeah. I can say whatever I want. Fair enough. Um, another thing worth pointing out is that this doesn't necessarily stop tokens from entering play, because usually those, well, I mean, they always enter play. They don't get played. So uh, your big token spam will still work when this is in play. Yeah, but it's just you pay one and it's all gone. Yeah. Well, at main phase. If you're, like, say, Birds of a Feather, it's still reasonable if you're using it to do a DFO or a Troublemaker face-off or something. You know, yeah. Those critters aren't going to go away till your opponent's turn. Imagine if this was immediate. That would be nice. That'd be pretty interesting. Yeah. This is also a counter to bodyguard. You said bodyguard, right? Mm hmm Yes. Very much so. Although it is in white, which is also the bodyguard color, and if you're in white, you there are few white decks that are not also pink. Yeah. Yeah, so this is actually yeah, Grandpa points it out. Like the interesting thing is that that first ability is more powerful than unique, as I think you had been saying, right? Like it, it's it's yeah, not it's distinctly not unique. Yeah, unique. You play the thing, then remove the other thing. This you just you just can't play it. Yeah, uh, completely stops mist main. Mm -hmm. Just can't do that while well. this card doesn't play. And yeah, blushy dash x free. Well, at least so you can. If you have a way to retire the Mist Mains. Yes. But then you're giving your opponent a window where Mist Mains in your discard pile. Yes. And oh. also, not a lot of decks have ways to retire their Mist Main. Well, they At don't right now. Like, yeah. Like, there are ways to do it. There are, but there are so few and usually not in colors that mm -hmm. Mist Main runs. Yeah. Um, but yeah, as a as an early game play, um, in particular, well, 
against a variety of decks. Aggro is one of the ones that stands out for sure against aggro. Grandpa's is pointed out, plus you dash. Um, Angel Wings, good fires. Other things that get played more of uh, multiple copies of, those are the ones that come to my mind, but the really big impactful things. Yeah. Um, yeah. This has a potential to be useful. Of course, it's going to be a removal target. But that's fine. Um, if you're playing... <sighs> Let me think. Which decks would... So, like, the first thing in, that comes to my mind is Grogar, Orange, White. Maybe? I can play this really early. If you want to. I am thinking that a new White deck would run this as a sideboard card as long as, like, Thorax is in meta or something. Yeah, that's a good point. Really good point, actually. Like, it is definitely a sideboard card. Mm hmm I don't think you run this. There are certain matchups where you wouldn't run this. Like, against farm, it doesn't do anything. Nearly nothing. That's right. Yeah. And against control, it's a lot worse to. I mean, it's still. Eh. Well, I mean, a, you can remove their rack of starlights. Yeah. At home. Yeah. Keep exhausting, giving eighteen. Really annoying. Actually, that's a that, that's a good point. Yeah. In in that matchup, it's more for that second ability that you play it, you use it once, you assume it's going to get removed. But yeah. If if you manage to get rid of two other things, then yeah, that's really good. Yeah. Uh, not only though the opponent has a window to remove it before you can use the second ability. Right. But uh, it's good they spent the removal on this. But yeah, I like this card. It's cool. It's nice. White utility. Mm -hmm. We always uh, need more of that. Next card. Sure. Okay. Dodgy Shopkeeper. Serial Collector. Two power, colorless, one cost. Unique Earth Pony friend. With an immediate activated ability. If you have played cards with at least four different card types this turn, banish this card to gain four, draw four cards, put a plus one power counter on each of up to four of your characters. Really cool card. So, yeah. Unfortunately, if you have like two characters, you only put two power counters. Hmm. Fair point. Maybe this should say distribute four power counters. I don't mm. think it would be so bad. Although this, notably, this puts it on a character. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I would like to put so. four plus one power counters on my main, please. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that's. Uh... One cost colorless card with no requirement. Yeah, that's not happening. Um, I mean, farm doesn't play four types of cards; it only plays three types of cards. <laughs> Troublemakers, events, and resources. But you're playing this, which is your friend. Oh yeah, that's true. That's true. Mm -hmm. Uh, so it is. Let me think. Like so, I'm I'm thinking of the the feasibility of going neutral on the AT. Uh, obviously, oh, the mean, troublemaker costs one. This costs one. You just need I mean, a you're friend still and resource. Getting value from the cards you're playing. I mean, yes, you really are. Good. Yes, you are. I mean, combo is the is the thing that comes to my mind with this card. No. So what I'm thinking about is. You don't really build around this card. I think you just play it. It's a cost-efficient friend. Mm -hmm. And if the effect happens at some point, good. You got a bunch of stuff for free. And if it doesn't, well, whatever. I don't know. That's, like That's my take on this card. I don't think you build around this card. Please. Well, it's, what's, very, it's too specific. Like, What is the probability of this effect actually going off if you're well, not planning to do it? 
I mean, a lot of a lot of decks play troublemakers and events and resources and friends. All on the same turn. Well, I mean, if you have this card in play, and if you have the opportunity to do so, you'll probably do. But I don't think you build around this. Mm. I don't think you build a deck with in mind that's like, aha, I'm going to proc this card. Especially since it's like a one-time use. Like, a control deck runs all four card types. Generally. Most of the time, if it has troublemakers in it. Yes. Um... Uh, Chaos Control runs... And Chaos Farm runs all four card types, and so on. I don't know. Like I've seen how useful a card like Spirit Siphon can be in uh, in in sort of moving ahead a long string of card draw, and that's only drawing three cards. Yes, but Spirit Siphon does not have a very specific ability. In fact, it, its condition is barely a condition at all, right? You just need events. One interesting thing, actually, is if you have if you have already played four different card types this turn and you draw into this, you just play it and immediately proc it. Yeah. Or you played three card types, minus the friend. Yeah. So if you, if you draw into another one while you're in your big turn, it's, it's just amazing. But yeah, anyway, this card is weird to me. Uh, perhaps explain? Well, it's just... It's interesting how we have different takes on this one, because I think it's a card that if you put it in, you just... If it happens sometimes, cool. If it doesn't, well, it's fine. It still was a cost-efficient friend. I mean, that's not a... I don't think you're wrong about that. It, it is... The fact that, like, uh, sorry, being a two-for-one is one of the best cost-effective ways out there. It's more efficient than three-for-two or something like that. Um, so that makes sense that just for incidental value, you would get some benefit from it. Although, like you mentioned, like, the control decks being the most likely ones to be able to just incidentally proc this, to what extent do the control decks care about a cost-efficient friend? Well, confronting is nice sometimes even for a control deck. True. But yes, it's weird to run this card in a control deck, unless you specifically mean to proc it. And even if you do... Okay, let me rephrase. I think you should not specifically put too much effort into trying to proc this card. Oh god, drawing into a second one when you activate the first. That's what I said. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I think I would not be surprised. That's what I'm going to say. I would not be surprised if we saw some I don't know if abuse is the right word per se, but some creative applications <laughs> uh, to use the, the sort of make it sound good way of saying it. Sure. But we'll find out. It, this this it probably engendered the most discussion of all the ones we've looked at so far, I think. So yeah. cool design. Okay, on to the Troublemaker. Miss Harshwini, status quo, 5 power, 3 points. When this card is uncovered, replace each problem. Yeah, don't find this Troublemaker with Tempest. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a good idea. Yeah, do not, uh, do not put this into play face up. Uh, unless you have a way to challenge it with a pipsqueak right away. And you think you're going to win that challenge. Um... Yeah, as a as a five power three points, that's that's a great ratio for your opponent probably. Uh, but as a one cost, replace all the problems. Granted that you have to play it the turn before you want it to go off. In any color. In any color, that is that is efficient. 
It's great to find with a Gogger if your opponent is about to challenge stuff. It's also great against any troublemaker control deck. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And yeah. uh, Pink gets the ability to to use it whenever because of sudden fruition. Like you can play it on your turn and then pop it right away, and you draw three. Yeah. Uh, you, you draw three cards for that. Yep. Um, yeah, and notably, the three points don't really matter in her otherwise, because she's just gonna go away immediately. Mm -hmm. um, as soon as the problems are placed. Yeah. So yeah, you had already mentioned really good against Troublemaker Control. Uh really good against Farm. Kinda. No, she cannot uncover because Farm plays Epics. Well, yeah, like really sad well it it mm, i mean i wish it was good against her there are well hmm. it's only uh, like it's only as good as moving your opponent's main home in farm because the only time she would uncover is when your opponent does not have a troublemaker there and if they had like if they play the troublemaker there and it did not uncover yet, and they're ready to farm it next turn. Then that's good. Well, but that's the only like implication. It 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 clears off the other problem though too. Sure. Yes. I don't think that's that. It's it's like, it, yeah. it's it's certainly not ideal. No. Yeah. I think. Like yeah. It's, yeah. I mean it's... yeah. Sure. Not every farmer control will have two epics up. Well. Control will probably not have two epics up, depending on which control it is, of course. Yeah. But uh, admittedly, farm, I think yeah, it's... like you know, this is a highly telegraphed move. Like, oh, this aggro deck is playing a troublemaker. I wonder which troublemaker it is. Um, it's Starlight. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, so like. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Zilla is a legitimate Winter point. Zilla, yes. yes, that that's a that's a possibility. Um, so, like, if the farm deck has some way to block it with an epic or something, eh, admittedly that's not easy to do if the troublemaker's already down. Um, so it, it's tough. I, I think you're right that it's more for anti control. Um. And there's there's a lot less that a control deck can do against this versus using a dilemma. Yeah. I hope I hope this will not be middle rook 2.0. But admittedly, middle rook also removed all the resources, which was ah, uh, I hate that card. That yeah yeah yeah. I don't. So it does only cost one. And it is a high flip. It's... And it's in any color, not just yellow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, any troublemaker lock you have, you cannot feel safe anymore. Granted, you still know it's coming. You can guess that it's coming. And uh, sirens are still feeling pretty well. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Uh, yes, for some light, you would get the you would get the cherry berry triggers. Only one though. Uh, since the problems are all replaced simultaneously. Mm -hmm. Although I suppose if you had more than one at each problem. but So if you uncover two of them at the same time, you still replace once, right? Uh, Actually, no. No, no you I, I think twice, you... Yeah. yeah, you replace twice. Yeah. yeah, because you replace... You process the first one. And... You would queue two replacement triggers, yeah. Yeah. So if you play three of them, it's three replacements. Yes. And if you have day shift, that's three cherry blossom points. There we go. We have a deck. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, so like, um, you're locked in here with me. Only triggers when it's solved, right? Ah, uh, let me check. Uh, no, just replacement. Okay. 
but eh, no, this <laughs> isn't a thing. Even less of a thing than the stuff I usually uh, suggest. Um, yeah, super cool idea for a troublemaker. Like you could, you could have implemented this as an event. You could have implemented this as a resource. It's it's a it's a cool idea to implement it as a troublemaker and thus by necessity make it colorless. Um and and create some interesting counterplay for the opponent. Like implementing this as a troublemaker builds in the fact that the opponent sees it coming, it comes on this one turn delay. Um yeah, I, I think that's that's nifty car design. Yeah. It's also not a troublemaker in traditional sense. Yes. It's very unlike every other troublemaker in the game. Except maybe Discord. That one is a little bit also not really a troublemaker. Mm -hmm. But still is a troublemaker in many senses. But this one you just Play it and then immediately goes away. Okay. Yep. Next up, right? I I know where we are in the in the bit now. Uh, staff of sameness, the super rare that I mentioned. Five power, two cost, three purple requirement. Goes to your home. The start of a player's turn. You may exhaust this card to choose a player and a problem. Till the end of the turn, that player's confront requirements for all other problems are equal to that player's confront requirements for the chosen problem. Uh, I, I'm pretty sure I, I know the answer to this, but I just want to confirm. If their confront requirements change for the chosen problem, that gets reflected from all the other ones, right? Mm, I have no idea. Yeah, I think so, yeah. Because it doesn't... So the effect does not specifically say that. Oh, I see. Okay. The front becomes. It just says that. It... So as oh. yeah yeah, as 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 Grand Boss has clarified, right? Confront requirements work like cost modifiers, like eccentric, or uh, it's going to work at, at et cetera. Do not change the confront requirements. They change what you must have to confront the problem. But I'm did, did I sure say that right? A card that modifies confront requirements. Well, oh, there will be erratas to fix ah, that. I see. I see. Okay. Well, I'll admit that does remove a lot of the uh, of the uh, bookkeeping that this card was that I thought this card was going to require. Anyway, the way this is worded, I think, would still, like, even if we had cards that modify confront requirements, this just says that they're equal. It doesn't actually write snapshot the moment. It's just the statement is, is that they're now equal to that problem. So mm -hmm. I think they would keep up updated with cards that change it. But it right. doesn't matter. Okay. <laughs> so in that light, let me think about this. So. You can, so, the fact that you can use this at the start of either player's turn still makes it really interesting. You can use this to, like, so, yes. You can use this to have yourself be confronting problems that you weren't before. You can use this to have your opponent be confronting problems that they weren't on their turn so that you can force face-offs on your turn. Which is, hey, single face-off aggro, that's where my mind goes all the time. You can finally confront blackmail. <laughs> uh, yes, yes, you can do that. Um, since it only triggers at the start of the turn, you can't use it. Well, you can't use it where you play a dilemma and then go straight off there. You have to have the dilemma stick around. Yes. Um, uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure that's right. Prison light confront requirements are what's printed on the card. Um. So what you do? Okay, are you ready? This is the best deck you ever heard. 
you play this with fire then ready and joe and your opponent can never confront a problem again wait how do you get joe to fire when ready you just play him there oh right yeah that's how that works yeah <laughs> well not without special no, it's just. I, I, I mean, the opponent can still confront stuff with special, like focused attention, or yeah, but um, they hopefully don't have that. <laughs> it is anyway. an interest. I mean, yeah, you know, they they run some amount of resource removal. Yeah, and friend removal. Like... Yeah, but it is an interesting or... idea. Um. I think this is a super cool card. I I, I I I haven't had a chance to think about it, but I'm sure there are some some tricks you can pull with this. In uh wait. Um yeah. So oh, wait a second. Grandpa's comment there about last known info. I assume that is about if if the problem gets replaced in the middle of the turn, or I think so. But you meant you can't choose the dilemma you're playing anyway, right? Because you have to choose at the start of the turn. Yes. Yeah. That was that was what my yeah. earlier comment was about. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. It, it it's. But yeah, it is weird that it snapshots it. It's definitely unusual because if you replace the problem, there's no more. That problem does not exist anymore. Like, at all. Because it becomes a different card. Mm hmm. Probably, well. For all that said, for all that that discussion and I don't want to say confusion per se, somewhat. <laughs> um, please keep printing cards like this. This is what I want. <laughs> cards that that as I've as I've said, cards that mess with the game and and yes, and I agree. Change things up like this. The, the, these kinds of cards are my favorite cards that do really unusual stuff. And um, push the game engine to its limits. Yeah. Which I guess means more more super rares. Which hey, these yeah. are supplements. You can release uh uh prize wheel four can be all super rares. That would be nice. Yes. Yeah, I agree. Uh next card? Yeah. Which is last card, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. Our problem. Polish argument. Seven wild for both players. Problem enters play. Three dis discord. Almost said discard there for a second. Discord counters on it. At immediate speed, you may remove a discord counter from it. Two, either have uh, uh, basically give plus two to both sides of that of this problem. Give minus two to both sides of this problem. Or give plus one to the bonus over there, and I immediately see actually that uh, the 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 deliberateness of commentary's magic text because I can see yes, this card is these mo these abilities are not modifying the confront requirements; they're modifying the power you need to confront. So fair enough. Also, look at the tightness. The tightness. Of I the text. know. I know. They're really it's pushing the limits of how much text they can fit on a problem. There's no more text. <laughs> this this There's is no well place to put text in there. Like that that first paragraph could be a little bit longer, but other it than that, be, yeah. this is this is all you're gonna get, unless we start messing with font sizes or card templates. Yeah, I think problem text on problems is small as it is. So yeah, I don't think you can really mess with font sizes there. Yeah. Uh, so, 
let's look at the edge cases. So for one thing, this can be a three bonus point problem if you're doing a DFO and you want to score three points. That's... But if you try really hard, it could be a four bonus point problem. Yes. Or six, sorry. It, yes. Even more if you try even harder. <laughs> there, are, <laughs> there are ways that you can really push that if you want to, yes. But what you do is you make a 15 bonus pro point problem, and then you win, right? I I I, I prefer my fifteen point troublemakers. Actually, uh, <laughs> that's actually a viable strategy. Um, anyway, yeah. Or, uh, yeah, this can be on the on on opponent's turn nine, eleven, thirteen to confront. Seven's already enough most of the time, um, but worthwhile. Or going down seven five seven, uh, five three one if you use all the counters to make it easy to confront. Yeah, this is a good control problem. It is a good control problem. I feel like an aggro deck might actually want to run this too. Frankly. Do you have a five five with bonus two? Or a 3-3 three, three with bonus 1. Or a 1-1 one, one with bonus 0. On the turn that you're saying, okay, I'm doing a DFO. Yeah. It's a very versatile problem. Mm -hmm. Because it does literally everything. Well, it does literally everything up to 3 times. But, I mean, yeah, you're not going to use the counters until you need to, so... Yes. Yeah. And in an aggro deck, you'll probably reduce requirements and add the bonus all at the same time. In the control deck, you'll probably increase the counters. Uh, well, you'll probably, like, use it... Like, it's unlikely you'll use all three counters at the same time. Yeah. You'll probably try to. As needed. Your, right? Yeah, like, yeah, the, the opponent will put some stuff there. And you'll look and they okay, you got ten you, you you have ten abilities there, there's no reason not to use three counters up, take you to thirteen or eleven, I guess is what you'd go to. Um God, that's that's gonna be so frustrating if you're the aggro deck uh, on on the other side trying to confront this. Yeah. Also you could force a single face off as a mm -hmm. control deck here too, by not confronting on your turn and then confronting on your turn by reducing the thing. Yep. There's a, there's a lot of ways you can go about this. Yeah. Now that said, this isn't impactful enough that you would search for it with Discord, right? No. Control, well, if you're in control, probably finding something else like prospecting interruption, which is just better in every way, I think. Mm-hmm. That card is so strong, or alternative solution, which is a ridiculous card, as I'm saying, or a blackmail if you're an adventurer. Yeah. So that's that that's interesting. Like this is gonna be the kind of card that goes in basically everything, and then sometimes shows up and just really spices up the game. Which, like, when I say it that way, that sounds like a really good design for a problem. Sometimes, if problem replacement is a thing that happens in your games. Yeah, what is this other problems you speak of? <laughs> I only know the starting problem. But yeah, it's 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 a really as as we've as Hithark's already harped on, really versatile design. Um in some sense kind of a kind of a build your own problem in in play yeah. which is really cool all right that is the end of the prize wheel so far uh what are your thoughts on on this this group i like the tricks you want 
what are your thoughts that people couldn't have guessed uh, without you talking? <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, not enough purple. I guess that can also be guessed. Uh, but yeah, there's a lot of cool cards. Uh, interesting to build around. But I do like the Trixie one. And not just because it's the Trixie one. Yeah. No, yeah, yeah. I, I, I can agree with that. I think the, the prize wheel cards in general uh, have been, uh, obviously, have a really good track record of being impactful in core and adventure. Like, there's only, only like three cards of the first two that haven't seen any real serious play. Um, so, chances are the same will be true for this, for, uh, for this group. Um, yeah, they've been really impactful. These all seem super creative, super useful in a variety of contexts, or for those that aren't useful in a variety of contexts, then extremely useful in the context that they are useful in. Um, so, yeah, seem like great, uh, great spice for the metagame. Yeah. We'll see what comes out of this. Um, uh, do we know when the beta will be over, or when the cards are going to be released? I don't know. I guess changes have been made. Uh, like, uh, what is... I'm making a completely un uh, uneducated guess, but December is generally release season? Yes, that's usually when stuff gets released. Oh, that's right, we need a designer card. Uh, was the panel approved for that, or is it still... Uh, for Cider Fest. Right. That makes sense. I was thinking that 11 is a weird number, and yeah, there will be 12. That makes a lot of sense. A lot more sense. Yeah, we can go yell at Charlie to approve the panel. <laughs> uh, so I guess that's... Is there a... Well, I guess, strictly speaking, there is no... I was going to say, is there a thing at Ciderfest we, that we want to advertise? But I guess, strictly speaking, we don't. Uh, me and Cheese will be doing an Our Place panel. Uh, that's not related to horse cards, but it's related to ponies. Uh, we'll be talking about how the entire management and organization and the like structure, how did we work it all out to bring like thousands of people together to put some ponies on the canvas mm -hmm. and yeah joking luna will be running ccg events uh, i think it will be core in harmony i think so uh, yeah i don't remember if he and i think he announced it in the server right i'm pretty sure yes yes there was an announcement for that cool yeah so yeah uh still cider fest is gonna be fun i hope Create a card panel will get accepted. But if it doesn't, there's Van Hoover, right? Yep. That's in <laughs> that's in January. Uh as far as us come back tonight for the upper final of the invitational featuring grandpa's and bugle. With none of these cards, unfortunately. Uh but with Starlight Glimmer. Magic Instructor. <laughs> Yay. It also, I, I think it's like, have we, did we do a stream about those bands or not? No. Okay. We should do that. Uh, actually, no, maybe we did. I can't remember. I, okay. If if we haven't, then we should. <laughs> It'll be a little late. But <laughs> <laughs> just just a, t a tiny little bit. Maybe. When those bands happened, there was a lot of invitational stuff going around. That's so Yeah, that's... That. I think, yeah. Well, anyway. Uh, that is going to bring us to the end of our stream for today. Uh, thank you, everybody, who came out in the chat and uh, added and watched the stream. Thank you, Aetherhawk. Thank you. Uh, yeah. In two weeks' time, we will be back. That is October... Uh, Oh, my October's sticking in my head. November 6th. 
18th. <laughs> wow. Maybe somewhat tired. November 18th will be our next stream. Uh, we'll let you know what it will be about. Actually, November, November 18th will not be our next That's stream. right. It's Ciderfest. Yeah. Okay, fair enough. Uh, <laughs> at some point, <laughs> some Saturday after November 18th, I guess we'll work that out. Yes. Will be our next stream, yes. Um, all right. Anything to say before we sign off, Itar? I like the Trixie card. All right. Uh, hope everyone enjoys the rest of their weekend and uh, see you in a fortnight. Bye.